Welcome back, folks. As Afghanistan continues its collapse before our very eyes, we are now learning that a classified cable sent from two dozen State Department officials serving in the Kabul embassy to Secretary of State Antony Blinken warned that Kabul would fall into Taliban hands by the end of the month. The memo sent through the State Department's confidential dissent channel also predicted that Taliban forces would quickly seize control of the country. It gets worse, by the way. They even provided recommendations to, quote, mitigate the crisis and speed up an evacuation. Joe Biden was asked about this earlier today. Can you say why, after that cable was issued, the U.S. didn't do more to get Americans got out? all kinds of cables, all kinds of advice. If you notice, they range from this group saying that they didn't say it'd fall when it would fall, when it did fall. But saying that it would fall to others saying it wouldn't happen for a long time and they'd be able to sustain themselves through the end of the year. I made the decision. He has changed his story over and over and over again. First, there was no recommendations that this could happen. Then he was split. Remember that term? Now we learn of, of this cable. Well, that's one you should have read, Mr. President. It's one you should have read. Joining me now is former U.S. ambassador to Germany and former acting director of national intelligence in the Trump administration. Rick Grinnell is with us. Rick, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Rick, you know, it's interesting because everybody's talking about intelligence, intelligence, intelligence. Everyone I've talked to from in the administration you worked in, the Trump administration, says this was certainly a possibility, which is why they still had 2,500 troops in Afghanistan. Can you talk about what you knew during the Trump administration without, you know, giving up any, any secrets that would put you in trouble? But for the American people, is this a load of you-know-what coming from the Joe Biden administration? Well, it's really difficult to know what to respond to with Joe Biden because he has changed his tune. It was uh, we didn't have any intelligence that showed an immediate concern or immediate fall. And now when presented with the evidence, he is uh, saying, well, there was conflicting intelligence. Let's be very clear. I've been talking to former um, as a as a former DNI and former State Department official. I served in the State Department for 10 years. I have a lot of friends who are current State Department employees and current intelligence officers. And what I've been hearing for the last couple of days is this started in June. People were very worried. Uh, remember that on July 1st, they closed, uh, the Biden administration closed Bagram. There was a hue and cry from intelligence officers and from State Department officials to say, do not close Bagram and have American troops and NATO troops, 2,500 American troops, 5,000 NATO troops, don't have them leave when you still have the American embassy open and Americans still in Afghanistan. We, uh, the, the troops need to be the last ones to leave. So in early June, this started to happen. By the time uh, Bagram was closed on July 1st, uh, General Miller, Scotty Miller, was very clear that by closing this, you're going to encourage the Taliban to speed up their attacks and to speed up their reconstitution. And so this was warned in June, State Department officials frustrated. By July 13th, Grant, you had 22 of the 23 political officers and econ officers in Embassy Kabul, American Embassy, signing a dissent cable saying this is a disaster unfolding. This is July 13th. But they had been working this for six weeks before then. So let's be clear. What this means is this was not an intelligence failure. This was a failure on Rick, the part do you think, of politics and the political people to not listen. Do you think that cable ever made it to the president's desk? And I've been saying tonight that I believe that he's only being fed the information they want to feed him. I think he's being kept from the TV news screens because I don't know how else you explain his delusion and ineptitude of what's going on on the ground. Even watching TV, you'd know. Do you think he's being actively kept in the dark about this stuff? I don't know if he saw the descent cable, but I do know for sure that the cable uh, went to Secretary of State. And the Secretary of State then has an obligation to tell the president. I can tell you in the Trump administration, 
President Trump would have been told of a dissent cable from people on the ground. By the way, when President Trump was uh, handling the issue of, of Afghanistan, remember, he wanted these troops out a long time ago, years ago. But we adjusted because of the reality on the ground and the information that we would get. Now, President Trump would be very frustrated by saying, you know, we, we need to move forward. We need to get our troops home. And we were going down little by little. But he yeah. always listened to the people on the ground. As yeah. frustrating as it was to hear that things weren't going well, you have to respond. Lastly, let me say this, Grant. Yeah. Yeah. The Taliban heard very clearly from President Trump that there was a credible threat of military action if they made a move onto a city. The Taliban did mm -hmm. not hear that same credible threat from Joe Biden because they clearly did it under his presidency. They moved yeah. to take over and, the country. And, and it's clear, I don't think any of our enemies believe that threat would be legitimate coming from Joe Biden. They did believe it coming from President Trump. Rick Grinnell, man, thank you so much for laying that stuff out for us. It's a pleasure to have you on the show, especially during a week like this when your, your knowledge is uh, so, so beneficial for us. Thank you. Thanks, Grant. Grant Stinchfield is on Newsmax every night fighting for the America First agenda.